Minutes turning into hours. Minutes turning into hours. You just open up your mouth, won't you just open up your life? Won't you just say, Lord, this is me. This morning I am just coming to you. When I come into your presence, oh God, it's not about the amount of time. Oh God, but I just begin to say, Lord, I'm just after you. I just want you, I just want you. I just want more of your presence. I want more of your power. I want more of your spirit. I want more of your anointing. Lord, just begin to just show up in our lives. This morning, Father, we take up the limits of you in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, oh God, that there will be cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We bring into captivity every thought and every plan of the evil one. We declare today that you are the Lord, our Redeemer. You are the Lord, our righteousness. You are the glory and the lifter of our heads. You're an exceeding great reward. You're an exceeding great reward. We bless your name. We bless, come on somebody. He's our exceeding great reward. Our cups run over. Our cups run over goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. He, he watches over us. He watches over Israel, watches over us. We bless your name. We bless your name. Come on. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, just move by your spirit. God is worthy to be praised. Psalm 47 says, clap your hands, all ye peoples. Shout to God with, with a voice of triumph. For the Lord most, is the most high. 
is to be feared. <coughs> a great king over all the earth. He subdued the peoples under his feet and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us. The pride of Jacob whom he loves. Amen. Look at that. Verse 4. He chose our heritage, our inheritance for us. He has gone up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of the trumpet. The singing and pray, sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our king. Sing praises. For God is the king over all the earth. Sing praises with a sound. God reigns over the nations and God sits up upon his holy throne. The princes and the people gather and the people of God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to the Lord. He is highly exalted. Amen. Look at that verse, verse 9. It says, for the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. I want you to understand there's a shield. Amen. God has given a shield over your life. Amen. And as he says, the shields belong to God. He is highly exalted. But today, I want to emphasize today, verses 4. He chose our heritage for us. Amen. The Bible says he has made ways and in in, he says his blessings and favor has fallen to us in pleasant places. And so today may the Lord just begin to just pour out his spirit upon you. Wherever you are in your life, wherever you are in your journey with Christ, may God begin to show up supernaturally. Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. We bring your sons and your daughters before you. We declare that they are, O oh God, yours. And today we declare that the blessing of the Lord is that you have chosen our heritage for us. And Father, you said, oh God, your lines has fallen for us in place places. Father, we declare today just the favor, just the grace, just the peace, just the love of God upon your people. This morning as we worship you, as we praise you, as we celebrate the goodness of the Lord, may you just show up in the lives of your people. May healings take place, may deliverance take place. Oh God, may restoration take place. May somebody encounter you. May they just be experience a touch of God upon their lives. Father, I pray that they would not leave this place the, the same way they walked in. May they leave this place having encountered the very presence of the Lord. You are an almighty God. You are a great God. You are an omnipotent God. You are an all powerful. Uh, come on, let's just worship Him. Let's just worship Him. He is a great I am. He is from everlasting to everlasting. We worship you. We praise you. We glorify your name. And we say this morning, you are welcome, Holy Spirit, in this place. Not only in this place, but into our lives. Oh God, lead us into all truth. Reveal the heart of the Father to us. This we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, Amen. God bless you, Amen. Welcome. Let's just worship God together. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise this morning. Amen. Come on, we're going to praise God. Hallelujah. We're going to dance. We're going to shout. We're going to sing. We're going to rejoice in His presence. Come on, everybody. Yeah. Hallelujah. We've come to give you glory, God. Dead day. 
Come on, I believe right now we march into battles, amen, but we are victorious right now. Come on, put your hands together because he goes before us and he prepares the way.
church of God, we're no longer afraid right now. We gotta be bold. We gotta be strong. And we gotta be ready. Come on. Ah. I'm, I'm not, not afraid. afraid. Come on. Come on. I'm, I'm not, not afraid. Tell yeah. yeah. every giant yeah. get out of my way. Ah. Ah. I'm not afraid. Oh. I'm not afraid. But I know he's got me. Tell every giant See. get out of my way. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Oh. I'm not afraid. Oh.
We speak life. We speak life. Come on, right now. We speak life. No matter how it looks right now. In the name of Jesus. There's so much of me. said we speak life and this morning I declare that even as you have an opportunity speak life not existing not just getting by but abundant life this is Zoe life this life of God that is not dependent on an economy it's not dependent on a society or a country. It's not determined by political or even social uh, issues, but it is dependent on who he, uh, he is. We speak life. The songwriter goes on to say, and there is healing. And often when we look at healing, we think it's just physical healing. But today, May it be more than physical healing. You see, you may need spiritual healing. You may need emotional healing. You may need a mental healing. But today I'm here to say to you, you can receive healing from the Lord. Amen. And God can begin to touch you right now where you are. All you got to do is say, I speak life. You see, there's too many people speaking negative over your life. There are too many people that are trying to rise up against you. And today we declare that no weapon formed against you, no weapon.
weapon fashioned against you, no weapon that is raised against no tongue that is raised against you, no one that speaks negative, no one that speaks something that is out of the will of God, that has no power over your life, it has no power over you. And in the name of Jesus, we declare that the favor of the Lord is upon you. We declare shalom over your life, that there will be nothing lost, nothing broken. The favor and the grace of the Lord will be multiplied upon your life. I speak in shalom over your life. Nothing lost, nothing broken. Oh, the, just the favor of the Lord to be upon your life in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody say shalom. Somebody say shalom. Somebody say peace. Somebody say peace in the name of Jesus. We honor you, we honor you, we honor you, we honor you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, shout unto God with a voice of prayer. Shout unto God for he has given you the victory. You are more than an overcomer through Christ. You are more than an overcomer through Christ. And we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. We overcome, we overcome, we overcome, we overcome. In the mighty name of Jesus, we worship you. We are more than overcomers through Christ. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. He is the glory. He is the lifted of our heads our exceeding great reward we worship him almighty God thank you for your presence thank you for your peace we declare to this, this morning that happiness is being restored in every home in every life joy is returning joy is returning oh in the name of Jesus Father, we bless you. We glorify you. We honor you. We give you thanks for all that you are doing and all that you are. And so, God, this morning, just speak to us. Just move upon the lives of your sons and daughters. You love them, Lord. You watch over them. Keep them, Lord. Even as we continue in your presence this morning, we believe that the entrance of your word brings light and life. And even as we are encouraged by your word today, we pray, O oh God, that you would speak, Lord, for we your servants here. And everybody said, Amen and Amen, 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 Amen. Bless the Lord before you seat, Amen. We're going to sing one song, Amen. Uh, I always say the bag of bones, but I, 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 I don't know, no, I forget the title, Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together as we worship God.
Cause he picked me up, turned me around, placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master, I thank the savior, I thank God. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, hallelujah, bless the Lord, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You may be seated, amen, amen. Thanks to the worship team, amen. He picked us up. He turned us around. He placed our feet on solid ground. Amen. Our God is faithful. Our God is great. Amen. He is mighty. We honor him. We bless him. Amen. Amen. Well, bless the Lord. It's good to have all of you in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. And we, we bless today just to worship and praise God. Uh, we've got a, a special program today. Today, we, uh, our youth and our Sunday school are blessing us. Amen. So we have a special program for our youth and our Sunday school. And uh, so I want you to just be blessed. So we're going to get the leader of the Sunday school and the youth. They're going to share with us a, a, just a word of encouragement and prepare the way and pave the way for our children. Amen. Uh, they're going to bless us today. Amen. And so welcome to all of you. So some of you that are visiting with us, uh, welcome to all of you. It's good to have you here. Amen. It's good to see you here. Amen. It's good to see you here. Amen. I see there's a lot of faces. Amen. Some faces I've seen for a while. Haven't seen for a while, but it's good to see you again. Amen. And smiling. Amen. That's a good thing. Amen. And for some of the new faces, welcome. God bless you. Have a great time. I pray that you enjoy just being with us as we worship and praise God together. Amen. So I'm going to hand over to Annie today. She's going to bless us. And thereafter, Terina is going to come up and she's going to encourage us this morning. Let's put our hands together. Amen. I greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus. I want to thank Pastor and the leadership for affording me the opportunity. It's really an honor to share this morning about what the Lord has been saying to me uh, in the past few weeks about our lives and where he is taking us. So um, a few weeks ago, we had a meeting with uh, Pastor John, and uh, Pastor John always has this, uh, he always starts a conversation with, what is God saying to you? So uh, he caught me off guard because normally he asks Pastor, but he asked me first. And he said, what is God saying to you, Annie? And you know, I was taken a bit aback because I didn't expect him to ask me first. So I didn't know what my response was going to be, and I was in my mind, you know when somebody asks you something, and then in your mind you're trying to think what they want to hear. So you're trying to work out an answer to quickly to give to them that will make them happy and make them pleased, and you really forget about what the question is. So when he asked me, what is God saying to you? I, I just smiled at him and he said, come on Annie, isn't God saying anything to you? And then I said, no, you know what? I have to share with him, and then I said to him, I said, the Lord is saying to me, and he's been speaking this word to me for the, past, for the past few months, is that he is going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. There's going to be a manifestation of the Holy Spirit like we've never seen before. And we as the church and the body of Christ, we need to be ready. We need to be ready in anticipation, prepared, and waiting for this outpouring. And this outpouring is not going to take place only when we gather here in the church, but it's going to take place in our homes, it's going to take place in our workplaces, it's going to take place in the schools and in the universities. We are going to see an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, we are living in a time when we will experience this. I believe that. We're living in a time and an, and an age where there's so much of things going on around us, so much of turmoil, so much of challenges, so many negative things, so many um, you know, things that make us just sit back and say, is this really happening? Pastor and I were on our way back from Peter Maritzburg yesterday, and uh, we, we got stuck at the toll. So for those of you traveling that way, uh, make sure you leave ample time for your trip. So it was a really long wait. But while we were there, there were taxis, that we're pulling up alongside us on either side, left and right. And in these taxis were children. And I'm not talking about uh, adults. I'm talking about school-going children. There were children in this, this taxi. They had beers and drinks. They were holding it outside the window. They were dancing. The taxi was shaking. And Pastor and I just looked at each other. And I said to Pastor, what? has this world come to. Children, 
These are children, they must be not even more than 16 or 17, drinking and partying and dancing and, and just no consideration for anything or anyone else. And I said, you know, we're living in a time where we see everything that shocks us, surprises us, maybe makes us think about life and where, what this world is coming to. But we're also living in an exciting time. Because it's in this time. Remember, whenever God moved in a miraculous and powerful and a way that man could not understand, it was in a time when everything was going very bad. And it's always in a time when everything is going in the opposite of way of which he wants it to go, that he steps in and he turns everything around and he pours out his spirit and his Holy Spirit changes atmospheres. Now, for, for um, a scripture reading this morning, there's two scriptures I want to share with you this morning. But the first one is from Joel 2, 28 and 29. So this is a very famous scripture. You all know it very well and you quote it. And I want to read it to you today. It says, And after this, or afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Or some of you, you have the version that says, on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. So when we read the scripture, we see that there is a promise. A prophetic word spoken by the prophet Joel, but a promise to us. And if anything, we are living in the last days. And the promise to us in the last days is that he will pour out his spirit upon us, upon all flesh. Now, you're sitting next to somebody today. Amen? All right. Give them a small pinch. Flesh or not flesh? Flesh. So everybody here falls under the category of all flesh. There's no mannequins here. There's no doll, cabbage patch doll sitting here. Right? Some of you dress up like mannequins, but there's no mannequins, there's no dolls, there's no dummies. We are all flesh. So when he said he's going to pour out his spirit upon us, he says he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. That means young and old, smooth and wrinkly. Every one of you, God is going to pour out his spirit upon you, but you have to be ready and open and willing to receive the Holy Spirit. The scripture says, sons and daughters will prophesy. Old men will dream dreams. Now this is not, I always see this as older because I dream a lot, right? So older people will dream dreams. Young men will see visions. Even my servants, I will pour out my spirit upon them. So a promise awaits us that needs to be filled. And the filling is of the Holy Spirit. So you need to know that you are a powerhouse wherever you go. Because if you are a child of God, it means that Jesus lives in you, which means that the Holy Spirit lives in you, which means that wherever you go, there can be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Whether you're in your home, whether you're at church, whether you're in, uh, in the kitchen and you're cooking, you can get a vision from God. You can start prophesying over your families. You can start speaking life over situations because God says in his word, that's his promise to us, all flesh, every one of us. Everything being said in the scripture is leaning in the direction of bringing a prophetic voice. This house is a prophetic house. You believe that? Everything in the scripture, whether it's visions, dreams, a prophecy, it's all leaning to us becoming more a prophetic voice in the nation. Yeah. The whole earth is waiting yeah. for us. Yeah. 
the whole earth is groaning. That means the earth is going through some stuff. There's some challenges. There's some things the earth is going through. But they're waiting for us. And if we sit back and say, let somebody else do it, then we're not falling under the category of all flesh. Because he says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Now, I know I'm speaking as, as a Sunday school leader today. But my one desire, and I want to share this with you, and I want every parent to listen to me very carefully this morning. I've been 25, over 25 years a Sunday school teacher. I've had opportunities to see your children. I've had opportunities to hold them. And my passion and my desire is for there to be an outworking of the scripture in the life of your children. Some of you look at your children and you'll say, too small. Hey, they're weak. This one is weak. Or this one, I don't think so. But this is not what the scripture is telling us this morning. It says all flesh, sons and daughters. So if you got a son and you got a daughter, then it means that this word is relevant for them. And we as parents, we need to start speaking that word, praying over our children and saying, Lord, anoint them to speak in tongues. Why are you afraid to say that over your children? I, when I carry your children, now you'll be scared you won't give me your children to carry. But when I carry your kids and I hold them, or even if I'm with them in Sunday school and they're busy doing their work, I go and I stand over them and I say, Lord, this one, pour out your spirit upon them. Let them speak in tongues from a young age. You know, that's my desire. I want to be in Sunday school one day and doing a lesson or be worshiping here in church and one of the young babies must open their mouths and start speaking in tongues. Or one of the young girls must come to pastor and say, Pastor, I had a dream. I had a vision. I saw this in church. Don't limit your children. Yeah. Now, if I'm not even seeing them every day, how much impact it's going to have you with them every day? You are seeing them. You are making lunch for them. Make the lunch. Tell them. If as you're making the lunch, when they eat this lunch, they'll be filled with power of the Holy Spirit. Do things out of the ordinary. We have to do things differently if we want to see a change in our lives and in our families. I pray that our children in this church, even our youth, not just the children that are in Sunday school, even our young people, they'll start writing poems. You know, we don't have Christian poems that are published by uh, recently. You haven't heard of Christian poems. But poems are so beautiful. I'm praying that. There'll be children here in the, in the congregation today. God will give them that anointing. The Holy Spirit will come upon them. They will start writing poems. They will start writing songs. They will start writing books. Come on, out of this house. Imagine this one day pastor's launching a book. 10-year-old comes up on the stage here. Come on, we've got to believe this. We've got to hope for it. Because we have to believe that what God said in his word he is going to do. There's no age limit. There's no age criteria for this. Remember Jesus. He was young. He was in the synagogue. He's talking to them about the scriptures and the books. He's opening. He's giving, answering questions. And if we say we want to be more like Jesus, then don't wait till we're older. Let's start now. Parents, desire for your children to be anointed and filled with the Holy Spirit. Pray for them. Anoint them. Joash is 24. Up till now, pastor will still take anointing oil. We gave every family anointing oil. He'll still take the oil and anoint Joash before he goes to work. Anoint your children. Don't feel shy. Don't say, oh, they're going to think mommy gone so holy now. Daddy is so holy now. They're taking oil and anointing. Do it. Yeah. Do it because you know why you're doing it. So I believe that we need to prepare our children for a time because when this infilling of the Holy Spirit is going to take place and fires of the anointing are going to be everywhere all over the world, our children must not be left out. Our children must be a part of what God is doing. Because you know when you come here in the front, children, you're listening to me, pastor prays for you. He says you're writing exams, he takes oil, he anoints you. The anointing is a symbol of the covering of God over your lives. But it's also, you know, remember in the days when kings were anointed, it was setting them apart, preparing them for acts of service. When you come in the front here, not for you to remember everything, not only that, let me remember everything I learned 
so that when I go right, I'll remember everything. It's not only for that. He's praying for you to set you apart, that you're going to be different. You're going to excel. You're going to take up an office one day, that you're going to be somebody great and influential. I believe that. And I want to end with the scripture here in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 21 and 22. These are three promises that God has for us. So while you're getting that 2 Corinthians 1, so it's 21 and 22, I want you to remember the scripture. It says, now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. There's three things he, he does. He anointed us. He set his seal of ownership on us. And then he put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Now, this scripture ties in with Joel 2. For me, it ties in with Joel 2 because it says God has anointed us. He's put the oil of the anointing upon us. He set us apart. He sees something in us. Then he set his seal of ownership upon us. The stamp with his emblem is upon each and every one of you. So wherever you go, they know that you're a child of the Most High God. And lastly, he puts his spirit in us. But I like the second part. It says, as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Now, when you buy a car and you put a deposit, you don't expect a bicycle. When you go to pick up the car, you don't expect them to give you two tires or a bicycle. You put in a deposit because you are you're guaranteeing yourself of what is to come. So when God says in this last part, when he says, so he anoints us, he sets his seal on us, then he puts his spirit in us and as a deposit, he's putting a deposit in you because he is looking for what is to come out of you. His deposit is a guarantee of something great that is inside of you. When he puts his deposit inside of you, he's not expecting the minimum you can give him. He's expecting the greatness and everything that you are, that he created you to be. He's expecting to see that manifest on this earth because God is waiting for us as sons and daughters to rise up and take our rightful place as kingdom ambassadors. So when he puts his Holy Spirit in you, and when the Holy Spirit comes and you are filled with the Holy Spirit, remember it's God's deposit. Whenever you make a deposit, you're expecting a return. So when God made the deposit of his Holy Spirit in you, he's expecting a return. And the return is greatness. The return is excellence. The return is something that no man has seen. Eye has not seen. Ear has not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man and the mind of man the things that God has in store for you. So God bless you. And I pray that this word would have encouraged you. Amen. We're just going to call Terry Nana. Greetings in the name of Jesus. Um, I want to thank Pastor and Mom and the leadership for giving me the opportunity to share this morning and also the stress. Um, it's not an easy thing to come and speak here, especially following uh, Sister Annie there. <laughs> um, yeah, so Pastor asked me to just share on, um, you know, to keep in theme with our Christmas season. Uh, but it was so difficult for me to find something. So I'm going to um, go a little bit out of it, but I'm going to hopefully try and tie it in, which is also another difficult thing because you have to find a topic and then you have to see how to say it also. So um, I think, Pastor, you need to give everyone an uh, opportunity at some time. So, uh, you know, everyone gets used to it. And they, yes, and they can uh, appreciate what you do every Sunday, you know? <laughs> um, so, okay. So um, I titled my message, my little message, uh, The Rock, right? And when you think of The Rock, now I'm not talking about uh, Dwayne Johnson. Um, I'm talking about God, our rock. Um, and God prompted me to speak this word uh, after Wednesday service when 
our worship team sang um, same God and it speaks to God being the rock of ages. And then there was a random advert on TV the other day uh, that spoke to a rock. And then Neil sent a message this week where he spoke about God being our everlasting rock. So I said, okay, God, you're not speaking to me in a voice, but you're showing me all these signs, so let me just go with it. So um, this Christmas season, I want to encourage you that we shouldn't let the festivities and the celebrations of the season um, take us away from what and who we believe in. Uh, we need something or someone rather to keep us grounded. And what better than a rock, our God, the rock. So the Bible often refers to our God as a rock. And I'm gonna share a few uh, references that I picked up in the word. And so firstly, the rock of ages. And what does that mean? It means that our God never changes. Throughout time, he is the same God. He is reliable, he is constant. No matter how things may change around us, our environment changes, people around us change, interest rates and petrol prices change, um, but the rock of ages will never change. He is the same God yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Um, Isaiah 26.4, says, trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord God is an everlasting rock. The next reference is, uh, God is a solid rock. So this speaks to strength and durability, something that cannot be broken or cannot be moved. Uh, you know, it's December time, we all like to go to the beach now, uh, but please don't swim this year, the water is not very good. Um, but if we think about the rocks at the beach, they are there for years and years and years. And the waves beat at them day in, day out, constantly they're taking a toll from, from the waves. But they are still there. They are not broken, they are not moved, they are there. And if we also think about the floods here in Durban when we had, and all the landslides, it was the sand that got washed away, but the rock stood firm. So our God is strong and all powerful and there is nothing that can defeat him. Okay, then there's Jesus, who is referred to as the rock of our salvation. He is our savior. He is the truth, the way, and the life. And the only way we can go to the Father is through Jesus, the rock of our salvation. Now there's something that I thought about, and it's almost a pun, but let's see if you get it right. So there's one famous rock, or can I say stone, in the New Testament that could be moved. Now I said that, you know, the rocks can't be moved, but there was one stone that was moved at the tomb. So the rock of ages was moved by the rock of our salvation. Amen. So if you want to move the hand of God on your life, you have to go through Jesus. He is the key to having the hand of God on your life. Okay, then we, we all know the Sunday school song, the wise man built his house upon a rock. So God is our strength, he is our firm foundation. If you are constructing a building, they say that, um, sorry, your foundation determines how high your building will be. So if we build our lives on God, there is no limit to the heights that we can reach. Okay, and then the, lastly, the last thing is that in, uh, in Psalms, David says, the Lord is our rock, our fortress and our refuge. He is our protector. We can run to our God in times of trouble and he will rec rescue us. Uh, you may be facing fiery darts of the enemy, but when our God goes before you, nothing will touch you. He is our protector. So in addition to keeping us grounded this season, the other reason that led me to speak about uh, God being our rock today was that even though we're so excited about Christmas, um, it's not an exciting time for everyone. Uh, for some, it's a very stressful and difficult time. Uh, you know, we, we may have lost a loved one, or some people are in financial issues, or whatever your circumstances may be, um, it's not easy. So I want to encourage you today with a scripture that has kept me grounded and has uplifted me throughout this year. And it's Psalm 61, verse one. It says, hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer. 
From the ends of the earth I call to you. I call as my heart grows, grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. The other versions say, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. We all can get overwhelmed sometimes. We all are pulled in different directions. We mothers, uh, we parents, we workers, uh, we have church duties. There's, sometimes you feel like you are just overwhelmed with the amount of things that you have to do. But always remember that God is there to ground you. Um, and then lastly, uh, one of my friends told me this once, and it really stuck with me. She actually lost her dad two days ago, so it's also going to be a difficult time for them. But she said this to me once, and it, and it was so good. She says, you know when we, when we say that we are in the worst position of our lives, we've hit rock bottom. And she says this, she says, when you feel like you have hit rock bottom, remember that God is our rock at the bottom. How good is that? How good is that? We always focus on the negative part of us being at the lowest point of our life. But he is the rock that's there with us. So you're not alone. God is right there protecting you, holding you up, giving you strength. He is our rock of ages. He is the solid rock. He is the rock of our salvation. And he is the Lord, our rock and our fortress. Okay. Thank you. I hope you're encouraged by the word. Amen, 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 amen. I'm just going to ask uh, Lanesh and the guys just to help us to just get the stage ready for our children. Amen. While they're doing that, this one, this. No, it's fine. It's fine on that end. Amen, amen. Now, I think our Sunday school and our youth, who's, get, who's getting ready first? Okay, the Sunday school is getting ready first, amen? And, and so you can come up as they're coming up, as our children are coming up. Just remember, um, you know, the, the, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, it says, uh, Darkness covers the earth and gross darkness the hearts of the people, but arise, shine, for your light has come. And that in the middle of... In the middle of everything going dark around us, remember that the light of God is still shining. Amen. Amen. And you are to be the light of, of God. Amen. And I pray for the parents that are in the house today as we celebrate our children, that God will just begin to give you and let you be his light. Amen. And, uh, and, and, and that you will shine wherever you are. Amen. God bless you. Am I giving the mic to somebody? <laughs> Okay, so thank you for your patience. Uh, the first item, because we wanted to give you a 